Hi, I'm Lisa Stones Peck from Spellbound Miniatures. Welcome to our YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed already, please do click subscribe and hit notifications so that you'll get notified of any of our upcoming tutorials. Today, we're making the wardrobe on our Cricut Maker. If you're not already following our series, we've made a sleigh bed and a chest of drawers, and we will be making a dressing table and bedside table too. For our tutorials and files that have several pieces, we label them in the SVG file and if you're not sure how to translate that label into design space and get your Cricut to draw that label on for you, we'll show you how to do that in the first part of this video. And I think it's worth doing it so that when you follow the tutorial, it's easy for you to know which parts are which. So we're going to start with our blank canvas in a new project and we go to upload and we've already imported the SVG file. So we click it and upload it onto the canvas and you'll see there that there are labels on some of the parts. We don't label every part. The legs are obviously the legs. This is the back of the wardrobe. It's, it's more the ones that are similar to others. So the first thing we're going to do is ungroup it. And then as you come over, you'll see the letters are all, always sort of the first thing. And then you have the pieces that the letters are on. So if we look at all the parts, T1 and T2 are the top layers, top one and top two. We've got SP for side panel, DP for door panel, and then SPI for side panel insert and DPI for door panel insert. And that should be over there. And then we've got the base one, two and three parts. So over here, you'll see that they currently, the letters say cut. So all we need to do is click a letter and then select shift on your keyboard, hold that down and collect, click sorry, on all of the letters. Keep holding the shift down and click all of the letters. And then go over to the line type change it to draw. Wait for my computer to catch up. And then we do the same again. Hit shift and select all of the letters and then go over to line type and click draw. Do it for all of the letters it seems like a little bit of a, a faff, but it's worth it to get all of the pieces labelled. Change them to draw. And then there are no other letters to be labelled. Hide the green square because we don't actually want to cut that. Now, because we've now changed it to draw, it's put a black draw line on a black piece because this is essentially all matte board. So if we wanted to change the color of all the pieces, and it doesn't want to do that. My computer's having a fit, there we go. I could change the color, say, say to green, and you'll see that the label's still there. It's just hidden because it's black on black. And then if you we hit make now, you'll see that it puts all the letters on one mat and all the pieces on another, which we don't want. So we need to attach the letters to the pieces. And I find it's just easier to do this. You could do the whole file, but then the Cricut would try and cut the whole file on one mat. So it's easy just to attach them in groups and then literally just put a box around everything 
and then go over to click attach and there are some labels on these pieces as well and you don't have to label all of your pieces so now they're all attached so when we click make it it will say draw and then cut so it knows to draw the label on the piece and then cut the piece you can always rearrange these things on the mat now if you think you can make a better job of it if you really wanted to get the most from your material you'll be better to attach the label to each piece individually and then that will allow design space to put it on in the most um, sort of the best way to get the most out of your material so that's all you have to do and then when you click make it it will ask you to put the pen into the pen holder and then the knife blade into the um, the blade holder and it will draw the labels and then go straight on to cut them so the wardrobe as with the other pieces is customizable you have several layer options you could have it completely plain this is the side panel with sp on it um, you can have just the outside frame layer you can have a single panel layer which gives it a more modern and contemporary feel or you can put in the second panel for a little more depth and detail and again these are the doors and you have the same option we do do a complete single frame for the door or we've got this split frame here and again you can have it with just the outside frame layer or with one or two center panels so that's the first decision i like to get my panels glued on and pressed before i begin construction because it's much easier to get them flat when they're like this then try and glue them on when you've already built it so decide what frame layers you'd like cut those out glue them and press them and then join me again for constructing the wardrobe okay so i decided to do just the one layer of craft board so the basic pieces of my wardrobe are in matte board and the layers are in craft board and I don't know if you'll be able to see that very well but it's just one layer so one layer outside frame and one layered panel if you did want to go and put the second panel layer on then of course it will be two layers of craft board you might want to cut another a second layer for the outside frame it's up to you exactly how many layers of anything that you want but these ones are one layer of mat board and one layer of craft board. So I've got two doors. I like my doors that way up so that this is the bottom and that's the top. The side panels and the back. And then we've got, if you did label the pieces, we've got three base layers. So that's B1, 2 and 3. I'll get those so you can see them and two top layers and the top the t1 goes on the top with t2 underneath but you'll be able to see because the the layer the b1 and t1 are smaller and then the t2 and b2 are bigger and so they gradient up like that So I'm going to stick the three base layers together and the two top layers together, press them and then we'll come back. So a quick note about the base. When I do my furniture, the wardrobe, the chest of drawers specifically, we have the smaller pieces, B1 layered onto B2 and B3. And I actually like them all to line up flush at the back so they're gradiented and you will need to just eyeball them so that this gradient at the front and the sides is equal but at the back I actually like that flush so that it would fit flush up against the wall you can if you want to 
do them where they do just come in on each side and sort of more of a tiered effect but this file's been designed really for it to be flush at the back so that's what we're going to do glue them one on top of the other and then press them so next we're going to do the legs and they're pretty straightforward we have two long sides two short sides and the short sides fit in side the long edges so if you've got this long edge you're going to fit the side up to and inside of the long edge not on the outside but up to the inside so we put the glue on this edge of the short pieces make sure that it's level at the top and the bottom where it would sit on the floor and where the wardrobe's going to sit on this so that you get a nice even fit all the way around if it's easier do it on the desk or bench and if you've got any excess glue squeeze that out and then keep it as square as you can while it dries. It's not too crucial because they will, there will be some movement in this when we go to glue it onto the base, but if you can get it as square as possible, then that's better. We do the same on the other side. And then we just put the glue on the remaining two short edges. And we'll leave that to dry. Okay, so those of you who've watched my videos before, you'll recognise this. It's my homemade gluing jig, and it's just a sheet of metal. I cover it in a Teflon sheet, and then I use a variety of magnets that I've got from um, Amazon. Uh, strong, different magnets, and they are pretty strong and, and awkward to get off of some things. Um, so they're great to just help me keep things aligned while and I can do it hands free so we're going to start we've got the base and I've got gone for the flush edge there and that's the edge that would go down flat and then we've got the wardrobe back so the wardrobe back fits down onto the base so um, let me just see that it fits onto the base I don't know which, yeah like that and you want it with the same gap either side so you could measure that out I'm going to eyeball it so you want really that is flat and that's flat and they kind of join up and meet there so that's what we're going to do first so the glue goes on the bottom of the back of the wardrobe and I like to use a Teflon sheet because if any glue squeezes out, the piece doesn't actually get stuck there. It peels off the Teflon sheet very easily. So just put some glue along the bottom. We put the base up and flat. And then this goes to join it. And just make sure it's equal distance from either end. Press this one this way and that one down. And if you get any glue squeezing out, just run along with a cocktail stick and wipe that off. And I always do because I over glue. I think I'm icing a cake, I'm gluing a piece of furniture. And then what you can do, I've got all various different bits of bench block and things, is use that to push up. And then you could use this just to make sure that it's a nice right angle, 90 degree. 
or also if you've got magnets they kind of do two things they push down and stick to the magnetic sheet so that if the, any of the materials bowed it takes the bowing out and then it also tries and sticks to this block so it kind of pushes it down and in at the same time that's why I like to use them so then that I know is exactly 90 degrees and it can dry like that hands free so the next thing is the side panel and that fits up to but onto the edge of the back piece and down onto the base so you might want to let that dry completely or you could carry on the difficult thing is you really want glue on this edge here you could put it along there if you're an accurate gluer so that's up to you I'll do that side I think that's easier for me from this angle without getting my head in the way so you want it on the bottom of the side panel and you see my matte board I've got several different colors going on I've just used some scrap matte board and I need some more glue and I am just going to run a bead along the edge here but it's the inside edge so it's not on the edge it's not on that edge it's on this inside so that it will line up with that so that's just so that I can crack on with this tutorial make sure there's none on that edge so we're going to put this edge goes onto the base and that edge goes up to the back so it's easy to locate it on the base first and then slide the back in place excuse my head getting in the way and again we can use our magnets some on the outside edge to make sure that where that's bowing there pushed it back into that corner and then over here the same and again squeeze out any glue with a cocktail stick although you won't really see it on the inside of the wardrobe but you'll know it's there so make sure that that's not quite level there, there we are. We want the sort of the same uh, gap up there. I can turn that around actually, that's easier. You've got a couple of minutes before the glue goes off, so you can wiggle it around a little bit. Then we'll do the same on this side. Get that back where you can see it. So again, if it's going on this side now, we want it on there and that edge. Again, we'll put the corner in first and then bring the side up and make sure that this edge is parallel. Mm -hmm. 
And that's that. Okay, you can probably tell by the lighting, it's gone very dark and stormy here and you might be able to hear hail outside, but we'll carry on. Um, this now has dried. So we've got the base, the two sides and the back. And the top, you can do um, the top one and two layers that are in the file, but you could also recut a second set of all the base layers. And if you imagine, if you took that and flipped it over and put it on the top, you could have the top that mirrors the bottom. That's up to you. I'm going to do this in the same way that I've done the chest of drawers file. So I had a smaller layer on top of the larger layer and it looks black at the minute because that's the mat board I had, but I will be spraying the whole thing in the chalky white paint that I did the sleigh bed in. So always dry fit and see how things are going to line up before you glue. And actually when I dry fit this and fit it naturally, the just the top edge, sort of this this top edge here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, just slightly points inwards on each side. So when I glue it, I'll want to just sort of tweak these side bits, just pull them out slightly so that they're parallel. And uh, I don't know if I can show you that. What we're aiming for is this line here to be parallel. You could draw it with a pencil mark first so you know exactly where you're going to pull it out to once it's got glue on, but I'm happy to eyeball that as always. So with this one, we're going to put glue on all three sides. And then make sure if you did line the top up to be flush with the back make sure you've got that at the back i've done mine sort of dead center and probably easy to put them both down and where you can see exactly how they line up at the bottom and then i just need to slightly pull the top out Hold that. Again, I can use my gluing jig here if I wanted to. And my magnets. And then remove any excess with the cocktail stick. I've lost mine. Oh, there it is. And once you're happy that that's all square and aligned, we'll leave that to dry. Okay, so once your doors have dried, you might notice, especially if it's mat board and craft board, they do bow a little. And so we've also got, if you've printed off the labels, you'll have a DPI, so that's a door panel insert. And these are not quite as deep or as wide as the door. You can see there, because I've got a black inside to my door, there's a black line and there's a reason for this. Now, I have these hinges, they're kind of um, standard hinges. I got these from Amazon and let's see how big they are. So the overall width is 15 mil. So, so that sort of from one end of the hinge to the other, one side of the hinge to the other is 15 mil and it's about 18 mil in height. So 15 mil wide when it's open, 18 mil in height. And you'll notice, oh, let me see if I can get that up there. Very difficult. There's a flat side and then there's the side with the barrel on. So you can see there when I talk about this sort of the side with the barrel on it's this edge is raised so when we glue it on the door 
we're going to put the door onto the hinge with the barrel side up and against the door jamb here. So not flush. We are going to see the hinges in this project. If we did it flush, it would make the door stand up off the wardrobe by the depth of that barrel. So that's why we actually do it. And you can put the hinges where you like in this. The only thing you need to be mindful of is there's an interior shelf. So I wouldn't fit that yet unless you know exactly where that wants to go because the hinge uh, might sort of interrupt where you fit the shelf. So I would fit that at the end. So put the hinges where you like and only on the door at the minute. So you turn the door over and it will fit nice and flush. Let me see if I can get it on there like that. And then from the other side. I'm not very good at close ups, am I? So we turn the door over and we're going to glue the hinges down and the sticky up piece of the barrel is facing down as well, away from us. So this is all the flat edges. So I'm just gonna put them. It would be nice actually, wouldn't it, if I had if they matched. So let me just make sure my doors are the same way up. And let me put my hinges. Um, let's say half a mil. And you will need to make sure you do a left and a right door if you've put the panel on with the split. If not, it doesn't matter though, whichever way you do it's fine, but if you've got it at the top and a bottom, you'll need to make sure that you do a distinctly a left and a right. So here, I've made sure they're the right way up and I'm going to put hinges on this side and then mirror it on the other side. And I'm just putting mine down half an inch. So that's about as complicated as that gets. I use a dot of super glue. You don't want loads because we are going to be gluing the door panel insert over this. So that will also hold it in place. So just put a drop of super glue and make sure you've got the hinge the right way around. And that We'll just hold this in place long enough while we glue the rest of the door together. Oops! Which one did I do now? I'll get super glue on my fingers. There it is. It's going to be easier if I hold it, I think. So just line that up and you don't you want to make sure that the hinge still works and you don't want to get glue in your hinge so that's why we, less is more on here it's just enough really to locate the hinge while we glue the rest of the door so some more on there and then make sure it works. And that's that door. And we just do the same for the other side. And we'll leave that to just go off and set a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is take the door panel inserts, we glue them onto the back of the door and remember me saying they're slightly narrower so we want to make sure that the front edges line up so they don't quite cover all of the hinge at the back but there's a reason for this so when we glue them on, make sure that the front is lined up and then I'll put glue over the whole of the back panel, put that on, line it up on the bench so that it's 
completely flush at the front and then I'll press these and then we'll come back. So the next thing we can do is put the legs onto the base and they're designed to fit exactly flush. So it's very simple. We just put glue all around the top edge of the legs. And if you have got uh, one side of your legs might have cut better or neater than the other, put those round to the front. We literally just line them up with the base onto the, your workbench or desk and push them together. And sometimes this little front bit can sort of bow in or out, so just make sure that that's level. You only just need to sort of lift it up and hold it until it takes. And then you can turn around and check all of the legs are on and it's just really it fits really nice and square wipe off any excess glue and leave that to dry if when your door has dried with the hinges on and you've pressed it it should if there was any bowing be nice and straight now if not you can gently ease it back the way you want it to go you might find that where the hinges were the set the inside panel might want to slightly or might have a slight gap might be slightly reluctant to glue so I suggest actually get a cocktail stick in there and open the gap up and then you can squeeze some super glue in if you're not happy with super glue put some regular glue on a con co cocktail stick if I could say it and actually make that gap a lot worse Keep your fingers out of the way, put some glue in there and then get a clamp and literally use that to clamp it shut around the hinge and then that makes it completely nice and closed join there. I probably could have used a little bit more glue when I was gluing the door panel in but most things are fixable. So the only thing to consider before we put the doors on is, do you want to decorate this in any way? I'm using, as you know, odd bits of matte board, so I've got some odd colours. And there's two other pieces we haven't yet used. Uh, the, they'll be labelled SPI, the side panel inserts. And they're what we use to secure the hinges into the wardrobe. So they go on second to last. Once those have gone in, then we can put in the shelf. We can have the shelf top or bottom. And so if you're going to decorate, I would suggest that you decorate the main part of the wardrobe now before we put the doors on. It's very difficult afterwards if you've got the doors open to, especially if you spray your furniture like I do, to the spray will go not where you want it to and not evenly. So I would do my wardrobe basic frame separately to the doors and also do the side panel inserts in the colour that I want at this point. Then when it's all dry, I'll put these in and secure the hinges and the doors in one movement. So that's what you need to consider next. Um, if you're happy to hand paint it, say, with the doors in position, then you don't need to do that now. But I'm going to stop and spray everything in the colour that I want it to be at the end now before I carry on and fix the doors in place. Okay, so I've now sprayed all of the parts of the wardrobe that I wanted to. I use a chalky um, finish spray paint, and this is in white. And we're going to look at the side panel inserts first. We're, they're cut, I think, slight, about one mil shorter than the actual side panels. So they should slide in relatively easily. And then they fit up to the side panel and make it look thicker and stronger but also then that's where we secure the hinge in there. So have a dry fit 
make sure that uh, you've got the side panels and which way round you want if you I didn't bother spraying the back and the doors the way round that you want them to open so I want my lower panel there so if I'm working I'll put that side there I'll work on this side first so I've got the door facing the right, right way around and then the side panel is that way so it's going to be in so the colors in and then I'm going to be gluing the hinge on the outside so not the inward facing side of the side panel so it's quite handy having two colors there so that's what I'm going to do and if you'll notice wait for it to zoom in this matte board of the side panel fits in to that gap there so when we fitted the hinge there was a gap that we left because the door panel insert is slightly narrower than the door and that is where in fact I can't get my words out today exactly fits the matte board side panel if it's a tight fit you can always just sand the edge of that that's all you need to do you just want it so that it's a dead 45 or even 90 degree <laughs> right angle um, and then we're going to glue these hinges on in the same way that we normally glue them on and we we don't want to glue them on so that there's the sort of overlapped that it won't open so you want it like that so make sure when you're gluing it that you have got that movement in your hinge if you need to you could do it like that and, and draw around there so that you're absolutely sure where the hinge is going and you want to make sure that the top and bottom of this is lined up with the top and bottom of the door so we'll work on one hinge at a time just a dab of super glue and it doesn't dry completely instantly there is time for you to sort of place it and move it around make sure that it's lined up probably do the bottom where there isn't super glue first and then insert the mat board and then press down the hinge so that you're happy and it should look exactly like that so there will be a gap when it's open which is fine and then when it closes it brings the mat board in to close completely so just give that a few seconds if necessary press it down with something to make sure it goes off properly and then we can do the other edge and you could actually see you can see especially when once one's glued where the other one should go because you've got sort of the exact edge of the hinge lines up with the edge of the mat board and that one too but again just do that if you need to and then when that sits in the wardrobe it will open and shut perfectly so we'll put another dab of super glue on here and I think it's easier I like to actually have it shut before I press it down so I know that it's going to and once you're happy it's in the right place press it down And there we have it and then the magic thing is you put this in we would we'll put glue all on this this will go in there and it fits in exactly we'll glue it and you might need to clamp it or press it so that it really seals and takes fast nicely and that's exact that's it simple as that so I'll do the other set of hinges to allow these to go off 
completely and then I'll come back and show you how to glue those in. Okay, so I've got both doors now glued on and if you find that once you've glued them on they still don't want to be exactly uh, 90 degrees just you can always just run some sandpaper along either of those inside edges um, that's up to you so making sure I've got the door the right way around with this at the bottom I want to put glue on that edge and we simply slide it into place and press it up to the side panel and it will locate naturally you won't be able to push it in anymore because those hinges stop it there so once you're sure that that's pushed all the way down you want to press it against the side panel there and get some clamps and just use those to press the edges I haven't, I need some bigger ones actually to go over there so I'll just have to hold those and that can just set up and it gives the interior of the wardrobe a nice finish and actually just before it goes off you just want to check that the door clears the top and the bottom and opens properly because I said there is a little wiggle room there so if you suddenly found it was catching on the bottom just slide the side panel insert up a little bit but that looks fine as it is so I'm just going to clamp that and let that dry and I've just had a thought actually if it's difficult to get a clamp in somewhere use the magnets and use them either side and they will help they'll attract to each other and pull the materials together where you can't reach or to save you having to hold them while they go off so I'm just going to use these are, I forget the name of them, like Neodymium, I think, something like that. Um, so that's a really handy way of joining or pressing materials together where you can't get a clamp to reach. Okay, so there we have it. Taken the, the magnets and the clamps off. It's this door sticks up a little bit so I've got some sanding work to do there and also if you find that because of the paint layers you put on or if you have put some beading of super glue on the edges to smooth them that there's a bit of a tight fit there you can always just again use some sandpaper and rub that down the last thing to go in is the shelf and also if you want to make a hanging rail so the shelf could go at the top or at the bottom, it's up to you. And this is why I said fit the hinges first, because there will be a little bit of a thickness where the hinge is bulging out in the craft board. So you might want to, if you want to know where you want your shelf, definitely make sure you don't put your hinges there. So make sure you think about that beforehand. And it will just slide in and you can glue it in place. Uh, that's not quite straight. I haven't glued that yet but it sits there and to make a hanging rail you could use a kebab skewer and cut that off just and glue it in you could use a piece of dowel whatever you've got to hand really a cocktail stick is just slightly too short for this but um, or you could use the make your own dowel method that I showed you in the sleigh bed tutorial so that's that and also the hanging uh, the hanging around the shelf is designed exactly to fit for the doors to fit against so they won't shut so i'm going to go away and paint this um well not finish finish it i'm thinking of doing a water slide transfer if not i'll paint uh, some decor on there and put some handles on you could use beads or you could actually buy um 12 scale doorknobs so i'll put those videos or photos of that at the end. Thank you for joining me today and we'll see you soon.